բարի երեկոց էր պոլորին, այս երեկոյան սերնարգը աժմ գհահորտած սպրվի Հայաստանի մեջ և այս երեկոյան սերնարգը վաղնես կսիալ գրնակ կտներց էր յութուբերու մեջ։ Որբես հիրունգալ հոգևորովի այս եգերեցո և համայնքի ու ասարագության պարեկալուստի երախտանքի, հարկանքի և սիրո չերմ զսկացումները գողթեն են ձեզ անխվիր այս երեկոյան այս ծերնագին։ Թորոնտոյի զորյան ինսիտութի նխացերնությամբ այս երեկոյան յուրահադուկ եզագան ծերնագը իր բատմագան անդրծարձը բիդյունենա կաղոտես ներս, հատգավես մաստակտությամբը ծերնարգի երկու հանրազանոտ և հեղի նագավոր բատկամապերներ անսնավորություններու, հանցինս դիար դոքտոր Հայք դեմոյանի ու ադոմ է գոյանի։ Այս պարել բաս արիթեն ոպտովելով այս սամանքի անունով հատկապես թողթույլ դրվի ինձի պարձր կնահադանք ու խոնար հարկանքը ներգացնել թորոնտոյի զորյան ինսիտուտի և իր հիմնացին դիար կուրկեն Սարկիսյանին իրենց սպերած անպոխարենիրի առակելության և ձարայության 9.915 այոց ծեղասվանության իրենց դարած պազմած ձախս հրադարագություններով, սարկմանագան ուսումնասիրություններ հայ համարսանագան գրտատոշակներով, միջասկային նրջագավոր ծեղասպանակետներու ելույթներով ու այրազան կիտագան միջուցարումներով ու այս պոլորը զսպանագված համար անդեղի դալի վջրագամությամբ և խիզային գամքով։ այս խոսքիս մեջ, այս երոգոյան սա ագուզեմ ասել։ Հայոտ ծեղասպանության 2015-ի հայուրամյակի թրանսեմին գպապակիմ հետևիալ երկու խոհերը պաժնել հայ հասարագության հետ։ Առաջինը հետևելով եղերամա մխակա կեներեի Ոչ թե 2015-ը ինչ բիդի դա, ինչ բիդի պեր է հայության կամ ինչով բիդի նբաստ է հայության, այլ հայ անհադը, հայ ասարագությունը ինչ բիդի պեր է, ինչ բիդի դա, կամ ինչով բիդի նբաստ է 2015-ի և խոսկս հայրեն պագելով, թեպի 2015-ի ծեղասվանության հայուրամյագի միասնական արշալույսը ավետելու մեր հավակագան գող կողքի միասնական ճանավարին որբես գարկախոս ունենանք չորորդ տարու Սուրպոքոս լինոսի կատողի աշխարարճակ ասվազապան և խողուն մտավորագան Unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Father Kirejan, the pastor of the Armenian Catholic Church. We are all here tonight for a very important program, a discussion between two highly esteemed intellectuals, Dr. Haik Demoyan and Atom Egoyan on Aurora Mardiganyan and the silent film Ravished Armenia and thereafter, we'll hear a brief report on the official commemoration plans for the Armenian genocide centennial. 
As you may be aware, Dr. Demoyan is visiting Canada for a very significant event taking place in Winnipeg tomorrow, where he will represent the Armenian Genocide Museum Institute in signing an official partnership agreement with the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. And we must acknowledge the contribution of the Zorian Institute in coordinating the realization of this partnership where, which has been in the work since uh, 2011. On behalf of the church, I would like to thank the organizer of this event, the Zorian Institute, for bringing these two esteemed intellectuals to be here with, with us today. I would like also to express our deepest gratitude to Dr. Demoyan and Mr. Egoyan for taking the time to be here and share their knowledge with all of us. I will now invite Mr. George Shirinian, the executive uh, director of the Zorian Institute and our master of ceremony for tonight to introduce our two discussants and to referee the discussion tonight. But just before I do, I would like to inform the audience that this entirety of this event will be broadcast live to Armenia. With that in mind, please try to avoid talking in the audience and entering or exiting throughout the program. I would also ask that you turn your cell phones off or into silent mode and refrain from any flash photography. Thank you for coming. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Shirinian. Thank you, Father Elias. Thank you for your warm greeting, Father Elias. And thank you for hosting us at the St. Gregory the Illuminator Armenian Catholic Church in Toronto, Canada. I thank you all for coming here tonight. My name is George Shirinian, and I am the Executive Director of the Zorian Institute. Welcome to an evening of discussion about Aurora Martaganian, an illustrious young woman who became the face of the Armenian Genocide for many Americans and Armenians in 1919 and the years thereafter. We are very fortunate to have two experts with us this evening, each of whom has done research on Aurora, but from different and interesting perspectives. Dr. Haik Demoyan is the director of the Armenian Genocide Museum Institute in Yerevan. He has researched Aurora Martaganyan for an exhibit the museum prepared about her life and her significance. He is currently working on an illustrated volume on Aurora's life and experiences, and he has just arrived in Canada from Moscow, where he presented a Russian edition of her book, Radish Armenia. Atem Agoyan is an internationally renowned, multiple award-winning filmmaker who also expresses himself in other artistic media as well, such as opera and theater. Of particular relevance tonight is the research he has done on Aurora Martaganian for an art installation titled Aurora's Soul. This installation premiered during the Luminato Festival in Toronto in 2007 and has also been exhibited in Lyon, France and Istanbul, Turkey. We will have approximately the first 40 minutes of the program devoted to Aurora Martaganian. This will include a clip from the silent film Ravished Armenia, slides from the museum exhibition in Yerevan, an excerpt from an interview with Aurora from the Zorin Institute's oral history archives, and a discussion by our two distinguished experts. Dr. Demoyan also happens to be serving as the secretary of the State Commission for coordinating the events dedicated to the commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. We will take this opportunity to also hear a brief presentation from him in the second part of our program, 
regarding the official plans for the commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Let me also explain that all the electronic equipment you see at the front of the church is part of a new experiment by the Zorin Institute. Tonight's proceedings, as Father Elias mentioned, are being streamed live worldwide via YouTube in partnership with the Civilitas Foundation and CivilNet. The recording of tonight's event will remain on YouTube as an educational resource for those who were not able to watch it live. You will be able to access it from the Soren Institute and Armenian Genocide Museum Institute's websites, as well as the Civilitas website. We will start our program now with a brief clip from the film Ravished Armenia. Atom will introduce the film for us.
many of much of the information that you're seeing uh, written in subtitles is actually taken from the original subtitles that are in the script. But as I say, it's a bit of a, uh, a reorganization of the original film. What's remarkable, and I'll talk about this at length later, is the journey that Aurora herself went through. Uh, uh, she is a character in the film. We don't see her uh, in those clips. I can show you some amazing stills that I found also at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Uh, and what I'll do uh, is I've got four copies of this, which maybe we can distribute. This is the original ad that appeared for the film and some promotional materials. So maybe that can be passed around uh, and you can get a sense of, again, this was a very popular film at the time. It, it was uh, reviewed by Variety, the trade journal, who uh, gave it a glowing review and it enjoyed considerable success. I just have to tell you an aside, which I think is interesting because it uh, inspired this installation I did, which is this woman was uh, acting in the film, and she was, uh, at one point, actually slide has an, quite an amazing quote where she you did an interview with her, and uh, basically, she says that during the filming, there was, quote, no makeup for me. They said, you don't need it. You have your natural beauty. You need nothing else. The first time I came out of my dressing room, I saw all the people with the red fezzes and tassels. I got a shock. I thought they fooled me. I thought they were going to give me to these turns to finish my life. So I cried very bitterly. And then Mrs. Gates, who was one of the producers, said, honey, uh, they're taking part of these uh, battles, but they are Americans. How will I know they're Americans? They talk English, that's their language. I have no Armenian around me, so I cry. So she was completely overwhelmed by this experience. And you can imagine the trauma of living it through, but that was nothing compared to what happened when the film was released. Uh, they had her on a huge cross-country tour to promote the film. And uh, two weeks after the tour, the publicity tour began, she had a nervous breakdown. Uh, and the producers were in panic because they needed to have her do the tour. So they hired um, lookalikes. But these might have been Italian women, Jewish women, Turkish women, we don't know. But they went around the country pretending to be Aurora. And uh, this was an ad an article from the Daily News in 1921, um, and it says, film, film star told it took eight words to stage one film. It took eight Aurora, uh, Arshulis, which is Aurora, Arshulis Mariganians, eight, count of eight, and one an original to put on a sensational film representing Armenia outrageous before the public. As it was shown in eight places at once, her guardian, had to employ seven girls looking like the original to go with the film. The seven girls, a chauffeur, a nurse, and Miss Gates, personal services interview, it goes on, there's a whole article about this. So I thought what was interesting is that not only was this the first film ever made that dealt with mass murder, that's important when you think about it, the first film Hollywood ever made that dealt with the idea of genocide was this movie. But also, it was our first taste of celebrity culture. When you can have someone who's replicated and the idea of stardom is also um, played out in such a fascinating way. So for these two reasons, I think the story is remarkable. And I'll go on at length about that, but I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, now I'd like to show a clip from the oral history that was done uh, by the Zorn Institute uh, in Los Angeles in the late 1980s. Yeah. 
but she died and no one claimed the body. And there is a small uh, cemetery in Los Angeles where nearly 250 unclaimed bodies were burned out, burned out the cremation. So only metallic plate of 1994 tells that the remains of first Armenian star, movie star. She is the first movie star, by the way. She's a genocide survivor. She passed all the horrific things. By the way, um, she explains in one of the, her interviews that she survived by chance because uh, Turks who wanted at the end of all in slavery, there was a group, there was a group of Armenian uh, girls, pretty girls, used as a sexual slaves by German officials and soldiers. Important moment, this was censored in later edition of the book. This part was censored. Then Turks, then Kurds, and when at the end they decided to kill all 17 girls, they made crosses to crucify them. Later, Aurora says that uh, that part is survived. In, in, the, in this uh, film. Later, Aurora explains that in a film, in a movie, they show the crucifixion scene in a very humanist way. Can you imagine what happened with that first? And she explained why, how she survived. Instead of making 17 crosses, there was a miscalculation. They made 16 crosses. And that's why she survived. She was taken to Haradon. When the scent of escape from Harlem was uh, 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 on the California studio, she fell down and broke her leg at the moment of showing how she escaped from the Harlem. But she insisted to continue works. It was very difficult for her, pain. And it, uh, they said that she covered this uh, bandage on the uh, clothes in order to continue the uh, works. Because she, in, later she explained that, at that moment I was thinking about my Armenia. Because, important moment, this film was shot for fundraising purposes. American News Belief decided to shoot this film to collect the money after screening and to deliver this money to help Armenian orphans and uh, survivors of the genocide. That's why it was a great uh, industry of fundraising and uh, not only in the uh, United States. So our mission is a unique one. Genocide survivor start her own story in order to help other genocide survivors. This makes absolutely unique that this story. We know, probably many of us, and all the world knows about Anna Frank. A very impressive story. Well, this is also, I don't want to compare and to say which is very impressive or not. It's not a matter of comparison. But Aurora's story must be uh, taught in the schools, uh, must be presented everywhere, because this unique single story tells the meaning of genocide in details. But moreover, this is story of the victory. She became victorious over the evil and she showed the real will of Armenia, these men or girls, right? 15, 16 years old girl, she won the battle against Turkey, her own battle. Now, I would like to say at the end a very interesting story with, which happened with me. Back in 2011, March, I was in California, and then uh, one of the Californian families invited me to select books, Armenian language books taken. Read Armenian, and uh, there were 30 books. I visited Dragon Guadalupe. I visited them, and after checking all the books and after selection of 30 books, I said thank you. And when I was on the way back to car to drive to uh, my place in uh, Glendo, she called me in and said, "Wait a minute, there is another box in the garage. Maybe there are some books there." When she came back with the box, I first glance I said, no, no books there. And then I started to check, absolutely no books. But what I saw, what I saw there, I will try to tell the story uh, while uh, showing the clips and the slides. And I will explain uh, the class because this story connected with some of the slides. Well, you will see here the cover 
of the first edition of Aurora's book, which appeared in uh, 1918. Based on this book, uh, then script was made for the film. It's absolutely limited edition. We have only single copy in Armenia at the museum. I personally bought from the auction. Uh, no other, uh, no other examples in Armenia. So this is the cover of Ravished Armenia. Later, film will be called Ravished Armenia or Auction of the Souls. Next, please. Now, I don't will be surprised. This is the original of the family photo. I found in that garage, together with the, all other original photos, I found really, really the personal archive of Aurora with the correspondence, with personal item, and I found out the lady who brought that box, so, uh, she was uh, a cousin. She is a cousin of Aurora. And she said, yeah, I know my aunt was some kind of famous. What I said, she did. This is Aurora Mahatikanya. This uh, invaluable collection is a part of our genocide museum collection. So you will see here a family photo taken in Chemish back in uh, 1905, and this photo was sent to the relatives of uh, Aurora who were at the time in the US. That's why this photo survived. And uh, the Los Angeles Examiner here back in the 1920s uh, borrowed this photo for a while uh, to uh, print in the newspapers and return back to the relatives. That's why this single example, single copy of original photo survived in this way. So you can see Aurora, uh, four years old, sitting next in the left corner. Uh, all family were killed, all family members were killed. Only Aurora survived. This is Chemish village where she was born. And you will see another photo next. Uh, modern Jewish culture. Everything changed. I mean, photo to destroy. One of the posters happened to be very nice. Yeah, you will see the uh, part of the movie at the moment when uh, we, one of the uh, Aurora's relatives, this is really a story Aurora told, all the kids were killed. This is the very moment. In survived part, uh, 18 minutes part, you will see Aurora three times. In one of this, uh, this part, you can see it from the right second in Aurora. Uh, crucifixion said, as I told you, this is another way of showing. Aurora called this very humanistic way of showing the crucifixion. Uh, Andra Mik, uh, with the help of this shepherd, uh, she uh, uh, escaped from the harem, but another Andra Mik, real general Andra Mik, also uh, met her in Erzurum when she was, uh, after Russians liberated Erzurum, and Andranik gave money, Russian money, and said, you, uh, my daughter, you have to tell your story. Well, one of the part of the films. Uh, this is the moment of uh, shooting the film, Tabletos in Hollywood. Uh, original poster which appeared on the front page of American Weekly in January 1990. Uh, official one of the official, probably uh, the main official of uh, uh, Mardigania's story in the film, the role of uh, ape symbolizing uh, Germany and uh, civilization. This was changed with a nice article on the transformation of the images of uh, uh, ape uh, holding the civilization instead of this ugly ape with the German hamlet, uh, uh, Turk with Yataban and the girl symbolizing Aurora appeared on an official poster of the film. <coughs> well, this is a uh, ballroom of uh, a New York uh, very famous Plaza Hotel where first uh, a screening of the Ocean of uh, Souls happened uh, back in uh, February 1990. Uh, newspapers were full with uh, different kinds of graphical representation of the film, uh, with uh, uh, very um, technology of printing attention. Uh, girls sold for 85 cents, and uh, such uh, titles were spread in American media. Well, you can see one of the articles. Hundreds of articles we can find. A mayor of Los Angeles personally invited Aurora for a dinner and called for all Californians to.
to go to see a field and pay money for tickets for fundraising and humanitarianism. We need different kinds of advertisements. Um, Aurora in so-called Armenian National Press. Hollywood tried to make a new star. Yeah. They tried to convince Aurora that you are already famous, you have to be a star, but this was not for Aurora. She remembered her own story. This was not for her. Uh, alone in the US, she could make a big career being in Hollywood, making new films, but she preferred the uh, loneliness. You can see Armenia in uh, Armenian uh, uh, traditional costume as uh, Hollywood wanted to see. <laughs> well, this is a couple of years after the film. Uh, another original photo for the collection I found. This is just a year of ma uh, marriage, 1929. Beautiful day. Wedding photo, it was in my hand. I nearly was petrified when I found this. Uh, she uh, married uh, with an uh, Armenian young man. Uh, one, uh, she had one boy still alive in hospitals of California, so that, as I knew. Uh, this is a, a, a photo after graduation of Simon Michael. Putting cards with a rose leaf. Out of that, from that collection. Uh, there was a, um, a disc uh, and a bit, uh, uh, with the Foxtrot music uh, issued in the 1920s, and one song inside is dedicated to Aurora, and this is one cover of that uh, disc. Uh, the house uh, where, the way she spent her last years, and the place where the remains of Aurora were Uh, from that collection, an original photo. Uh, she is 1970s. Well, uh, it was very hard to find. Never you can see Aurora in films uh, smiling. And I got one photo. I want to give uh, credit to one of the enthusiasts. There are a lot of people hunting for legacy of Aurora. A lot of maybe Arthur also is one of the hunters. <laughs> And uh, I want to, to give uh, credit to Armin uh, Hanja, who lives in California. He created wonderful material following all the newspapers. And this is from his uh, self-published uh, book, Aurora Smiling. It's an extremely rare uh, photo. Uh, probably we can find a lot of uh, archive uh, photos and documents. I would say that I was lucky enough that after finding that uh, collection and after big and long negotiations, it uh, took some years to convince people to give and they said finally yes. I would like to take, uh, thank uh, all the relatives of who agreed to give the collection to the museum. But then of the next day after that, someone brought the uh, Holy Bible, personal Bible of Aurora with the Armenian uh, marks on the pages. Uh, another lady brought a, a small bag she gave to one of the relatives. Another one Brought, brought what? I, especially during my tour, uh, brought, took with me this uh, stuff which is, which belongs to Aurora. So you can touch at the end, this is bijou. Small bijou which was uh, one of the personal belongings of Aurora. So this is more than music technology, so you can touch also the original item, so you can have a chance at the end to uh, touch this item. So we have very interesting collection. And plus, we have also 40 original newspapers of the Sanders Examiner with uh, articles on the film and uh, part of the book uh, also <coughs> printed in that uh, book. And then uh, finally, to sum up, uh, we have to tell the story of Aurora. Aurora told her own story, moreover. The book was uh, printed, she played in the film, it was huge. But now our duty is to tell the generation how 15, 16 years old girl committed and uh, accomplished her own mission to help thousands of orphans. And nearly 30, 30 million dollars was raised 
after showing that film. You can imagine how helpful that money was. And uh, unfortunately, the time is limited because I have a lot of things to do uh, to tell you uh, because of the fate of the book and the film. Maybe somewhere the original all uh, version, the full version of the movie is preserved. I would like to add that Henry Morgenthau played her own role in the film too. American ambassador is in the film. So the second person also was in the film is Henry Morgenthau playing the role of Henry Morgenthau. So uh, after that revised version of the book was printed, 20, 30 editions. It was so popular that in uh, one of the uh, books printed in back in 1920s, a lot of commercial advertisement became fun. So before Aurora's book starts, not a commercial advertisement. In uh, Great Britain, the film was censored for the reason not to make troubles, not to create troubles in the Muslim colonies after showing so horrible sex. Also, British edition uh, censored some parts of uh, Aurora's film. And postscriptum. After my long insistence and uh, using my voice and authority, if you would, this year, High Post, Armenian Postal Service, issued a special stamp, official stamp, dedicated to Aurora Marginalian and the film Ravished Armenian Auction of Souls. This is official stamp, Armenians, uh, Republic of Armenians, uh, issues and this is the first day cover and the official cancellation ceremony occurred in September in the Armenian Genocide Museum. This is one of the ways of the popularization of Aurora's story telling the, while telling the story of Armenian Genocide. Thank you very much. He was a middle-aged, I think, very bald, 
After a while, I learned many things about him. He even connected with the German trading company, the Oriental Handelgastschaft in the city of Bonn. He was a reserve officer who had been called into service. He helped the Turkish officials at Bonn mobilize an army there and had taken part in their many massacres in that city. He had been ordered to report to a German general whose name I do not remember, Aleppo, where the German commander was organizing Turkish soldiers for the Mesopotamian armies. But when he reached, this goes on. This is an eyewitness account. Uh, and it's really quite shameful that we're not aware of this woman's history. Uh, and I totally agree with, uh, with uh, Dr. Gamoya. This is an essential survivor's account, not only of what she experienced, not only because it was uh, uh, published at that time, but also by this extraordinary fact that we also have a recording of her recounting these horrors uh, in a, a living testimony made in video that we also have. And many of the things that she's talking about are things that she's also alluded to in this book and which we see in the film. So I think uh, on that note, this is uh, a project which I'm obsessed by, obviously. Um, this book that I'm quoting from was published by uh, Anthony Slide in 1997. It's an excellent account. Uh, it's being republished now. Uh, it will include the screenplay that I uh, mentioned, which was discovered at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. So you will be able to actually see the, and read the screenplay of, of the lost film. Um, and I've also written an introduction to the book, which I was going to read, but we don't have time. But basically talking about this idea of her being a super survivor. A survivor not only of the genocide, but also a survivor of the commercial attempt to tell her story, uh, to exploit her story, uh, and also to benefit from that sacrifice she made. As we have heard, I mean, so much money was raised through her efforts to help uh, the orphans and the survivors of the genocide. So we can't forget this person. This is, a, I would say, a, a sacred figure in, in our history. Thank you. Um, thank you. I would like to add some really important uh, information also. Aurora's name was new for Jewish Martyr Archons, but in newspapers of that time, another name was ascribed to Aurora, another title. She was called Armenia Janda. Uh, that's why back from uh, Canada to Paris, I have another meeting. This is some kind of Aurora tour I have from Moscow to Canada and back to Paris. Uh, we have to work also on French translation also. Translating also German is important because that part I uh, read it was uh, taken out in later editions. Then exactly the book was taken out from the libraries. Then miraculous fire occurred in the office of nearest relief. A lot of materials were destroyed. So sometimes some people and some powers became powerful and successive by forcing to forget something. This was one of the attempts in Aurora's case. But our duty and our task is to spread more information about Aurora. Because the reason why she played in that field it was very hard, very hard. Uh, and it was such a decision of Oscar Rafael to produce it. Who will star Aurora? They said, really Aurora. And she played very naturally. This, this is important. There's no need to tell how to play. She played exactly the same way as she experienced in, uh, back in 1915 and 18. Thank you. I will just add an interesting observation. Uh, coincidentally, Zori is publishing a book by Mr. Wolfgang Gust of Hamburg, Germany, full of documents from the German Foreign Office archives, all detailing the role of Germany in the Armenian genocide and the angle of the 
sexual exploitation is an ail that didn't come up. So this kind of research is doubly or triply interesting. You don't know where it came from. One more question. It's important to show the film documentary about, about Aurora and about the film. We need that documentary, 45 minutes long probably, but to tell the whole story, how is rape uh, uh, survived the genocide and how she played in that film. Documentary is very important, but also future films. We have to shoot this film. It's important. It could be part of the centennial, or not only linked with the centennial, afterwards, 2016, 17. But we have to do that. And the important information you have to know where what's to shoot this. We have two daughters of two cousins of Aurora Martigania. I visited them. They look like Aurora, 85 percent. <laughs> I suppose as part of the conversation, I would like to ask, uh, when did you first become aware of uh, the film and her story? Because uh, I'm interested in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, Armenia, uh, whether there was a greater awareness of her before we understood in the diaspora the significance of this uh, person. Uh, one of the problems how this part survived 18 minutes, uh, uh, one of the Armenians from Paris who repatriated, he took uh, a reel or maybe all the reels uh, with him to Yerevan uh, back in 1970s or maybe earlier. But that time, you know, film is a propaganda stuff. And someone, some guys from KGB checked that and they confiscated it. Fortunately enough, he made a second copy in Paris. That's why this part survived. We don't know where it was taken. It was full version, or it was this combination of in the one eighteen minutes uh, footage. Uh, this is one story. All the uh, during the April twenty four ceremony, you will see this movie, but it was automatically you know showing. No one said that this. No one knew uh, that this is optional source. Uh, Aurora story. It was very common for uh, for all Armenians in, in, this, uh, in Armenia to see that film in April 24. And the old uh, stories in uh, TV is also accompanying to show something about the genocide. Uh, without any uh, deep researches, this part of the film was shown as a real documentary. So this is one important moment. When I uh, became uh, director of the New Genocide Museum, um, I started uh, to look at the real documentaries, which really could be 1950 shooting, 16 or later. And then I uh, uh, find out that uh, uh, Russian edition, which was printed uh, in 2005, it's very bad, bad language. And I started to read this story. Of course, I read that story in your uh, English original. I was lucky enough within the last seven years to find one of the copies of the original. They said it's a 200 or 300, this is not really private edition uh, for employees of nearest relief, the book uh, I'm talking about, full version of that book which appeared in 1980. And uh, of course, uh, I realized that if we want to tell and to show the story about Armenian genocide, which is huge. And uh, we always operate with the statistics, one half million uh, genocide Turks, but how to personalize this tragedy? Go to the one detail, one human destiny, one faith, one story. This is my strategy to find out really powerful stories and to, and to tell all the genocide through these uh, personal stories. We did also very successful such I will explain also, I will use also the word operation, the story of uh, Sarkis Porosian, Armenian who was Armenian official who became hero while defending Istanbul back in 1915. When I read that book, also extremely rare book, I found out this is a good story. And uh, we started to popularize through website of the museum, 
And what happened, Turkish version, was translated last year, an academic clash started. One claimed, one academician claimed that this is false, this is not a real man, because he was awarded by Enver Pasha as a hero, because he destroyed first British uh, military board, but his family was killed. This is the story. And the whole book is really a uh, very film scenario where story <coughs> suggests to read in English, which was printed originally in English, uh, Sakis Torosian from Garden to Palestine. Powerful story. It's, it's interesting because uh, that you were then aware of this film much before we were. Uh, the copy that exists at the museum, is it uh, a video or is there actually a film print? Well, the copy we have, this is exactly the same, uh, uh, the same version that Richard Colonia made, and we uh, received, I would like to take also a widow of Colonia, that she kindly agreed to give rights to issue joint uh, DVD, this, because a lot of people who visit genocide the museum, this part of the museum exhibition is the most powerful. Uh, before ending the projects with the exhibition, when you tell this story, you sh show Aurora's photos, book, and personal items, and everyone rushed to buy a book and a DVD. And um, one more announcement, since I, uh, I uh, mentioned the book and DVD, uh, downstairs, the book Ravished Armenian reprints from the original will be available as well as DVD issued by the museum. This book and this DVD will be on sale, but important notice. My decision is that even after the death of Aurora, we have to continue her own mission. That's why we will, we will enable Aurora to continue her own mission, and the, all the money you will buy DVD and uh, books, I decided to give for foundation to help Syrian Armenians. That's why this is important for us uh, to enable Aurora to continue her own mission for her own people. Very good. <coughs> well, I can see that this is a fascinating topic and actually has a lot of depth, and I think we could go on for hours. But the schedule forces me to pause this section of tonight's program and uh, to thank Hyde and Atom for their marvelous insights. And I encourage everyone to research further uh, the story of Aurora Martagani. Uh, I would like to now, if you're given a moment, to pause and to clear your head and to clear your throat, Hyde. If you could tell us a bit about what are the official plans for the commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Well, I want to display all the challenges of jet lag I already uh, passed. Uh, well, speaking about the centennial uh, commemoration, uh, brief information uh, at what stage we are. As you know, the uh, President of the Republic of Armenia, Mr. Sef Sarkisian, uh, issued a special decree back in uh, 2011, April 24, to set a state commission, which official name is State Commission for Coordinating the uh, Memorial Events dedicated to Centennial of Armenian Genocide. Uh, a lot of uh, parties, uh, churches, political parties, uh, well, uh, legal organizations are involved and are represented in that uh, commission. It's very impressive, of course, if you look at the list, everyone is there. So, two and a half years already, the commission is working. Uh, the stage we passed I uh, called preparation. Uh, preparation for two uh, major things for 2014 and 2015, but not ending at 2015. 2015 is not a limit, it's not a deadline. We have to continue, and I'm sure this format of the State Commission will be changed somehow, but not to uh, end its activities. We have a lot of things to do even after 2015. Moreover, we have to set new agendas, new starting points to continue our work uh, in many, many uh, directions. There are a lot of proposals, and the Commission is not limited in uh, discussion of any kind of proposals, uh, be it uh, legal, uh, from the legal sphere, legal aspects, 
uh, economical aspects, uh, political, uh, educational, uh, uh, publications, uh, museums, uh, exhibitions. Uh, you can imagine that uh, every day in Jerusalem I receive receive proposals, uh, proposals of various kinds, uh, shooting movie, making exhibitions, uh, book translation, book printing, and uh, we all have to, we have to understand that this is a very sensitive moment. Of course, we expect a lot of things from the citizens, and this is understandable. And we are everywhere, we are busy worldwide. They want something extraordinary, and, and this is understandable. And the task of uh, uh, this state commission is uh, to face and to deal with all kinds of proposals without any limitations. And uh, uh, for uh, enabling uh, worldwide and the joint commemoration, um, local subcommissions also were well, said. We work with, uh, hopefully, in Montreal, we'll be meeting uh, with the Canadian subcommission. And uh, already today in the morning, I already said the next meeting with the Paris based uh, French uh, subcommission. So this will be a big network, a big network which will work not only for 2014 and 15, but we have to uh, preserve this structure. This structure is very important to unify our efforts and to get the uh, needed results. This is a very, really a moment, uh, moment of truth. We all understand the, uh, uh, the crucial moment of these uh, activities and what kind of events we want to develop for 2015. We also realize that Turkish part also uh, is ready for some counterbalance. This is also another challenge. And we also we have to realize that Turkey will be not uh, alone. And a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of allies or, or let's say countries will try to be helpful or neutralize our activities. I am speaking this about uh, very openly in order to uh, give you insight what kind of difficulties, difficulties we have to face. But this is not uh, for demoralizing or giving up. Moreover, any attempt to counteract our efforts for dissemination of information about the genocide, about the necessity to cope with the consequences, uh, to deal with the consequences of the genocide. And this is the main uh, uh, motivation for us. We have to uh, speak and fight for the elimination of the consequences of the genocide. This could be legal consequences, uh, this could be psychological, etc., etc. First of all, uh, we have to unite our efforts. There are some difficulties, difficulties I don't want to go into details. Uh, difficulties, difficulties in Armenia, difficulties from diaspora, but uh, the moment is, uh, of truth is that we have to leave aside our uh, years long, decades long uh, confrontation stereotypes. If you really want to want to win the battle for 2015, we have to unite our efforts. And what kind of uh, events are scheduled? We work on the detailed schedule for 2015. There will be major events. In year one, one of the major events will be the opening of uh, extended museum uh, of the genocide in Sidi uh, uh, You have to say that the two and a half times only exhibition Museum will be extended to show new materials and new information with new uh, technologies, museum, museum technologies. Uh, summits and uh, uh, conferences, large conferences, will be in Yerevan as well. For example, International Association of Genocide Scholars agreed to uh, organize uh, one of the meetings uh, next in uh, Yerevan in 2015 with the uh, hosting organization uh, uh, I represent, I mean, Genocide Museum. But also, uh, all these events will be not limited by Yerevan or Armenia. Worldwide, in Beirut, in Paris, in the US, in Canada, uh, State Commission will try to be helpful. And uh, this is, uh, although this State Commission is uh, organized and set for coordinating the events, uh, it also uh, will try to be helpful to organize uh, such kind of events locally everywhere. That's why my strong suggestion is you as a member of community, if you have any uh, uh, suggestions and, and any proposals, please write me as a secretary of that commission. I will include in the file and uh, soon the working group will uh, review all the uh, proposals. We have to take into consideration that we, our activities 
uh, will be mainly, but not limited, in the three, uh, with the three audiences. First is Armenian. One of the important audience, uh, don't be surprised, we have to uh, think about the proper uh, education of the, uh, our young generation, genocide education, how to develop unique and uh, uh, common, uh, common uh, curriculum for all Armenians, not in order not to be divided by the story we are going to tell. The second audience is international audience, how we have to tell all the story about the genocide, uh, local uh, societies, uh, Russian society, French, Canadian, American, everywhere. Uh, to do this, uh, one of the strategic lines could be taken is that we have to tell Armenian story, Armenian genocide history, in connection with local histories and memories. And uh, another important uh, audience is Turkish. Turkish audience, uh, we uh, really uh, need, uh, develop, uh, need in, uh, to, de to develop effective instruments uh, for influence. How to get in Turkish society, which we already follow how it's changed. Uh, comparing uh, 10 years, if you look back 20 years, some changes occur, uh, but we have to enable new generation of Turks to know uh, the truth, to force their own government, to uh, accept uh, the, the historical fact of Armenian genocide and to deal with the consequences of Armenian genocide. This is very important and very difficult at the same time job, but we have to, uh, uh, we have to be ready and to make such kinds of instruments you need modern technologies and ne networking. Now, uh, closed borders never play the role. But there are a lot of mechanisms and the ways how to get uh, in, the, in the soul and the mind and the uh, thoughts of a new generation. And this new generation is excited to know the another part of the Armenian story. And that's why I have to think in some statistics uh, of visitors, Turkish visitors to our genocide museum. When I uh, hold, the uh, hold the position in uh, 2006 until 2009, comments in conclusion. One is that uh, while the Zohar Institute uh, expends a great deal of effort in researching and publishing archival documents from places like national archives, Haifa showed us that archival documents can also be found in your basements and your garages. So I take this opportunity to remind everybody to uh, think about what family positions you may have books, photographs, letters, documents, and uh, let them not uh, rot in, in boxes, in storage. Give them to uh, the, the uh, Arena Genocide Museum, give them to the Zohar Institute, or another institution where they'll be not only preserved, but used. In regards to commemorating the 100th anniversary, um, it's, uh, I would say, a national responsibility for all of us as Armenians. And we owe a debt, as Efren has said, to individuals who've given so much to make a statement about the Armenian genocide. I'd like to close by uh, echoing the quote of St. Augustine that Father Elias gave us to start the program. In essential things, unity. Thank you all very much for coming tonight, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Now for the final minute.
minutes that we are together, I would like to ask all of you, if we are together with me tonight, to join, to join me in a prayer for the soul of our martyr, genocide martyrs, and especially for the soul of our own lost their lives in the Armenian genocide, and for all those whose lives were altered forever by the genocide and life after it. But prior to my prayer, I would like, with uh, um, asking the moderator if I could share just one talk, final talk, based on our faith. Sometimes we are asked as a person to pardon an error. The Christian faith says the pardon is based on three R's from the part of the perpetrator, the guilty one. The first R is his remorse, R. The second R is his repentance, the second R. And the, the third R is his restoration, restitution. Three R's. Unless these three R's are not met, there is no such a pardon. That's our Christian faith. So, Ais Yeregoyan Hat Kabes, Merna Dak Meru, Ye Manavan, Aisorvan, Ain Kan, Tsunsich, Huznich, Mes Krovich, Ais Nahadak, Aurora, Mardiganyani, Ajun Nera, Voskor Nera, Chen Khavir, Minchev Katnen Artarutuna Irenz Sevaspanutian. You are so hot, Gorgamadutaneng, Horut Horing Tong, Asuzo, Vormutian, Asuzo Artarutian, by its mank, Kodebant Fats, Zimvats, Krahus Fats, Zespanadvats. Watch me on your guazar, das nereka, das ne chorsa, das ne inga, ye varavel. Ais me bahan chadiragan, artarutian, jishmarid artarutian, kristoniagan artarutian. Mera starkara, vidisharunagen, vidisharunagbi, ye nishpes, skistasan, skispo. Meng, ich bes mir als Tasachos Nerna, Matna Nechetzin, ich pirilla, ich petkela, mer jura kanturis Nertruma, Eis me Baikari, Haver Jutian, Havidenaganutian, Je, Hai, Celaspanutian, Mardiros Neru, Mardiganianer, Hokineru, Ankastianamar. Eis mit Keros, wie die Hantrembor, Mias Napar. Voti in, in memoriam prayer in Armenian Hokvots Hankutselot. Hokvots Nankutselot, Christos Aspat, Aran Kistie Vormutium, Yemez Meravorat, Snoria, Stotun and Suma. Der Vormia, Der Vormia, Der Vormia. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christos, Vorti Asuzuan of Agalia Parekus, Katar Korachagan Siro, Diokian Kutsial, Zarais Yevachniach, Malavan Hok Watson and Kutselotson, Azar Inhalu, Tasningi, Merabrian Nadagats, Hamain Mincheselot, Zarais Yevachniach, Yemalavan Hokuin and Kutselo, Aurora Mardiganian, work angam, Vasan Havado, Yevasan 
հայրենիակ, հիշյասը ծահոդեր, հավուր մեզի կալստյան արկայությանքո, առա արժանի ողորմության, կավության և թողության նեղատ, թասավոր յալբայ ձարատոնցուկը որնյալ դեր մեր Հիսուս Քրիստոս ամեն, հայր մեր, որ սուրպ երիսի ամեն խող է ես այլ։ Այդ առարջում զինեք, ապանք տմարդիս։ Եվ մի դանիրը զմեզի պորտություն, այլ պրիա ազմեզի չարեն։ զիկո արկայություն և զորություն, եպ պար կավիդյան սամեն, Քրիստուս աստված մեր, որ մի ամոր են ավադասյալով ոսում ենք սիսուրը։ Մանավան հոգ ոսն անկուցել ոսն հազարինայուրդասնինգի հայաբրիյ բատմագան երե գոյան ծերնարգեն, գուզեմ հետևյալները հիշեցներ ծեզի, որ ծերնարգի էտ կրնան ուղվիլ վարը նեկնասրա և շարունագել այս մդերմիք զույցը մեր այսօրվա ուսնակներ ունետ, ատկմապեր ներ ունետ, վարի յուրասիրութ Եվ աբա ինչպես բարոն դոքտոր դեմոյանը իր հայդարարություն մեր ու մեջ հստագացուտ, այս սարիկներին և կրկերեն կրնակ վարը կնել և հասույթը, հասույթը որբես մադա, որբես հիշադակ, մեր Սուրյահայ, Հալեբահայ, Դամասկահայ, Սուրյահայ որբես մի դրի դու մեր ուղթին, մեր ուղթին և մեր իրենց մի ասնականության։ Այս մտկերով սիրելիներ, որնյալ եղերուկ իշնորած սպոպույն երթայ խաղոտյամբ և դերը մեր Իսուս Քրիստոս երեցի ընձեզ ընդամենես սյանցս ամեր։